Let's see the location of this asteroid across the sky as it actually happens to be passing um, right now through the area of the sky that's nearby that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction sort of between south and west. However, 1998 OR2, that asteroid we just looked at, is very faint. So you won't be able to see it with your eyes and probably not even with a small telescope. There's another asteroid, though, that you could pick up with a small telescope. The largest asteroid in the asteroid belt is called Vesta. And we'll go ahead and fly out to visit it to learn a bit more about this large asteroid in space. It will get dark for a moment. We're having to bring up the sky in the morning because Vesta is out in a constellation called Leo in the morning sky. We're going to lift up off the Earth and fly out to see Vesta in the asteroid belt, traveling 320 million miles through space. So here we are at Vesta. This asteroid is much larger than the one we saw in the Arecibo pictures. That asteroid was about a mile across. Vesta here is 326 miles across. It's still not as large as like a dwarf planet like Pluto. Pluto is going to be somewhat closer to like the size of our moon. And so those objects are big enough that they're very round. They have a round shape um, because they're sort of pulled into a round shape by their gravity because they're so much more massive. But Vesta here is a little more uh, lumpy shaped. NASA sent a spacecraft called Dawn that flew by Vesta in 2011. It took some close-up photos and especially looked at the light signature across the surface of Vesta to figure out its composition. We could then do things like compare that to meteorites. So meteorites are bits of rock that have fallen to Earth. And what we see here is a photo of three meteorites that fell to Earth. Um, the two on the, um, le or the one on the left and right were ones that were found in Antarctica, and the one in the center was found in North Carolina. Now, this photo is showing us bright colors across the slices of meteorite, and that's to show where there's different minerals um, in the composition of these rocks. And by comparing the light signatures from the slices of, me of meteorite we have on Earth to Vesta, we're able to tell that they're the same composition. So essentially meteorites found on Earth came from Vesta, or at least a, a parent body that might have been larger, where Vesta also came off of that. Asteroids break apart in collisions all the time. Part of the reason we want to study them is so that we can understand a lot of the collisions that would have happened early in the solar system especially. The pieces that break off of asteroids in collisions, they won't just land on Earth, they could land anywhere, and even on other asteroids. This seems to be the case for another near-Earth asteroid called Bennu. So Bennu is currently being orbited by a, Na a NASA spacecraft uh, called OSIRIS-REx. It got there in 2018. It's been taking lots of close-up photos and also analyzing the composition of Bennu. So let's take a look at that asteroid. We're actually going to bring up a little video, a compilation of pictures as OSIRIS-REx approached Bennu. So we can see here the asteroid spinning. Now it's much smaller than Vesta. This is only 1,600 feet across. So this asteroid is only about as tall as the Empire State Building. So Bennu is actually the smallest object that's ever been orbited by a spacecraft. Now, we were starting to learn a lot about it already. A paper came out from scientists this year. It highlighted some of the interesting boulders that have been found on Bennu, very highly reflective boulders. Let's take a look at a photo showing us these bright boulders. The composition of the bright boulders contains pyroxene, a mineral that forms during high heat melting. One of the reasons NASA wanted to study Bennu as an asteroid is that we don't think it has undergone melting. We expect it to be pristine material that could help us understand what was around in the early solar system that planets formed out of.
like the Earth. In fact, the only asteroid in the asteroid belt that's known to have undergone melting is Vesta. And the light signature from these boulders matches Vesta very well. The rest of the darker rocks that you see here contain minerals that um, have things like a lot of water locked in their structure. They likely did not undergo melting. And so we think maybe a formation scenario possible for Bennu that would explain these bright Vesta boulders is that there was maybe a fragment that broke from Vesta and struck another asteroid in the asteroid belt. And then a lot of rubble formed. And Bennu is basically just a pile of that rubble, which would have a few of the rocks from Vesta in it. Understanding the history of asteroids and the collisions between them will help us understand how precursors to planets in the early solar system formed. The best way to study the material in an asteroid like Bennu is to bring it back to the Earth so we can actually examine it, um, take it apart, do chemical reactions in a laboratory. And so what we need is a sample of the asteroid and Osiris Rex just collected a sample of the Bennu asteroid successfully on October 20th. In fact, let's take a vid look at the video of that collection. The spacecraft is extending its robotic arm and flying in very close and it actually touches the surface and it did contact the surface for six seconds and during that time it fired a blast of nitrogen that disturbs the material and allows it to collect um, material from the asteroid into a compartment. From photos right after the collection, they could tell that some of the sample was leaking out because some larger rocks in the sample were keeping a flap open on um, the containment uh, compartment, but thankfully they were going to place it into another container to stow the sample so that it could be sent back safely to Earth. And so they did that maneuver on October 28th and that sort of stopped the sample from overflowing, from leaking out. And they are confident that they collected a, a very full sample, that they got their goal of at least 60 grams of material. The spacecraft is going to depart Bennu um, in March, but it's not going to be back to Earth to drop off the sample until September 2023. If you don't want to wait that long, though, you're in luck. The Japanese space agency sampled a similar asteroid called Ryugu with a spacecraft they sent to it called Hayabusa 2. And they actually left last year from Ryugu, and they successfully delivered their sample in the Australian outback uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, the exciting gift is going to be for six teams of scientists around the world to get a sample of the Ryugu asteroid, including including a team from NASA. Um, and they did collect less material, so it's going to be a very small sample compared to what um, they're going to bring back from Bennu. And so this team of scientists at NASA, at least, has been practicing on other materials to sort of get it right when they finally get the sample of the Ryugu asteroid. Some of the things they're hoping to look for, maybe find in the asteroid, would be amino acids. Those are building blocks for proteins that make up living things. And so understanding how amino amino acids formed, how they might have been present in rocks in the early solar system could tell us a lot about the start of life on Earth. So it'll be really exciting if we can find those in the Ryugu sample or in the Bennu sample and being able to compare the two samples to each other, looking at more than one asteroid. Hopefully we'll learn a lot about how our solar system formed.